And now, your go-to source for year-round fantasy hockey advice, DFS, and betting coverage. This is NHL Fantasy on Ice, presented by Skip, the official food delivery app of the NHL. With the NHL trade deadline just around the corner, business is picking up in the fantasy hockey world once again. What a wild long weekend it was. It's time to break it all down. Brought to you by our good friends over at Skip. Welcome to another episode of NHL Fantasy on Ice. Week 19, waiver wire edition. Nick Alberga, Pete Jensen, and Anna Dua. What's going on, Pete? How was your weekend? What's going on, Nick? Skip, the official food delivery app of the NHL. Still warming up after a cold weekend out at MetLife Stadium. Anna, right? I know you were at both games. I was at the Ranger Islander Thriller Major props to what the Rangers did in coming back in that game, but a great spectacle for New York sports and New Jersey as well. Yeah, so much fun. Two great games. The Rangers game was awesome, but the New Jersey Devils look like they may be back, guys. So a lot of stuff going on. That was a must win for the Devils and and the way the standings were taken out. But I'm just going to say this, and this is to Johnny Lazarus also over there. Can the the Rangers fans stop acting like they won the Stanley Cup? It counts for the same amount of points whether the game was played at MetLife or whether the game was played at UBS. So Johnny Lazarus lifting the, the Stanley Cup over his head already a little premature. They won seven games in a row. Like That's kind of impressive, Bob. Okay, regular season cup. Uh, the other thing I want to do is give a nod uh, to the NHL action collab. We're not doing it this week, back next week, but we're on the over for the uh, the stadium series games, and, and both hit, uh, so that's great to see. I know, Pete, it's tough for the New York Islanders. I, th- I thought they had that game. I had some couple bucks on, on, on the Islanders to win that game, and then the Rangers came out of nowhere to come back. So let's get to the waiver wire, Pete. Some really, really intriguing names this week. I, I want to start with a guy you've been calling on um, the last couple weeks leading up to his return, and that's Arvidsson out in Los Angeles, right? He's been great since uh, pumping out the shots on goal, a couple of assists, one on the power play, playing the second line, Anna with Kevin Fiala. And the Kings needed a boost, let's be honest. They've been good since the coaching change. Maybe just that one blunder blip on the radar with the big loss to Buffalo. But other than that, they've been perfect and uh, really stunned the Penguins faithful in that big Yager night. I was so (laughs) happy to see all the content with Yager all weekend long, but the Penguins blew it. That was equally as bad of a blunder as the Islanders had within that Metro division, and it came at the expense with the Kings. Yeah, a lot going on. I feel like at this point in the season, lineup placement is key in fantasy. And how can you argue a guy like Victor Arvidsson being on that second line for L.A.? They definitely want to find a way to come back from whatever's been going on with them recently. At the beginning of the year, we thought they were Stanley Cup favorites, and now they've just fallen off. But maybe it's been the missing piece, Nick. Yeah, we love the shot prop. Pete, you called that out. He's hit in all three games, I believe, since coming back. We like it. I like it, at least, against Columbus coming up on uh, Tuesday night as well. There's a future Hall of Famer on this week's waiver wire list, Anna. Patrick Kane and the Red Wings. He's back (laughs) in the mix here. I feel like a lot of people have lost faith in Detroit, but... The Red Wings have strung together a couple of wins. They're still very much in a playoff spot. I think the Devils are sneaking up on them slowly but surely. Patrick Kane is a guy that, you know, at the end of the day, like if you have faith in the Detroit Red Wings, you got to have him on the roster. I I don't know if I'm there with that team right now, though. I feel like the other teams that are right in the hunt have a little bit more momentum. They're also getting injury returns back in the lineup. I think the Devils are making the postseason. Someone's going to fall off. Is it the Detroit Red Wings? In my eyes, probably. So I'm a little lukewarm, but if he's available, I mean, it's kind of a little bit of a no-brainer. Speaking of the Devils, Nico Dawes, still rookie eligible, has started four straight games, three wins in the span, including a 45-save performance a masterpiece against the Philadelphia Flyers to win that big game in a technical home game Nick so uh, I think it's a big uh, display from this kid and proof that he could be their starter for the rest of the season I don't know if he's going to be lightning in a bottle like Akira Schmid was in the playoffs but at least gives the Devils a different wrinkle something different than uh, the terrible goaltending they've had this season we have that uh, infamous uh, Anna Dua clip where she calls Akira Schmidt the breakout goalie of the season, and now he's in the American Hockey. We gotta, we gotta pipe that in this pod. That's all I heard there. Uh, so, with that in mind, I'm gonna temper my expectations. Shots fired for no reason at Anna today. I'm sorry, but I know you've had a long week. That's said in the too, promo. So. That's in the promo. That's in the whole video promo. I think it's, it's there it's, for. Forever. Man, let me choose what I wanted to be in there. Jeez, Louise. I watched I thought that. It was I was like, execution. this is 
I was like, this is what you decided to go with. I thought it was great execution, and you could still be right. And Schmid could could potentially be in a deal, maybe to Calgary. So getting getting around back to the, I don't, I'm trying to help you, and I'm sorry for even bringing it up. But what I'm getting at is I, I always temper expectations with the New Jersey Devils. Pete, you mentioned it three one and zero in the last four two point zero two nine forty two. Vitek Vanacek, I don't know how you guys feel, Anna. You've been high on this uh, for the last couple of years. I, I just don't believe in this guy. You don't believe in this guy. You've been saying that for a while. I don't believe in him. I think something, Anna, is going to come to a head in the next two and a half weeks, whether it's New Jersey picking up a goalie, if it's including Schmid in a deal to get a goalie, or if it's riding with Nico Dawes. I, I, I just don't think the sample size is big enough to, for them to be like, you know what, this is our guy. He's getting us into the playoffs, you know? I feel like he could get them into the playoffs, yeah. but I think New Jersey wants to be a contender right now. They have such a solid forward group. They have some young defensemen that are up and coming. To be honest, they're going to be a threat in the postseason if they had a solid goalie. So I think that's the lines they're thinking about. But I don't know. Like, I don't even know what to say here, Nick. First, you shot me down. Yeah. Then you brought me back up by saying I called Vanacek. Then you threw in Nico Dawes in there as well. So I'm just going <laughs> to stay away from any opinions on the New Jersey crease until this year's over. Thanks, Pete. You can you can go next. Well, I wanted to bring up a question I put out there, uh, fantasy edge alert, uh, talking about Luke Hughes just had the top skating speed, max speed by a defenseman in the whole league this season. Obviously, with him being 20 years old, the big conversation moving forward for fantasy, Nick, is who would you rather have as a keeper, Luke Hughes or the guy that's been the better rookie this season, Brock Faber, and he's been on a tear so far in the new calendar year. That's really tough because I view Brock Faber as more like, a, I don't want to say a shutdown guy, but he's not a guy who I think has the higher end ceiling wise when it comes to point production and stats wise. So I'd probably aim towards Hughes. Having said that, we know Dougie Hamilton's going to be back in the mix next season, right? And right. and that could, again, restrict what Luke Hughes can do on the blue line. So that's a tough one because, again, we think, we, we think Jared Spurgeon's going to be back from Minnesota. We know they're going to put him on PP1. So it's like it's one of those, like, I think you're good with either guy. But I'd probably, probably end a lean towards Luke Hughes. How about you? Yeah, I'm definitely doing Luke Hughes. Before Dougie Hamilton was out as well. Jeez yeah. Louise, Bob, you look like you just saw a ghost. My goodness. This isn't even a hot take. He's good at hockey. I cannot be wrong. Maybe I'm going to regret this, but I can't be wrong in this one. Like if in five years, Luke Hughes ends up being a bust, I'll buy Bob like a pastrami sandwich for lunch every single day. Like I'm very confident on this one. You see in the chat, I say Hughes all the way and yeah. four times in all caps, pedigree, 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 mm -hmm. pedigree. I don't see Faber's uh, two brothers uh, playing in the NHL, playing well. I see Quinn Hughes playing really well. I see Jack Hughes potentially being the best player in the sport or right in the top three. Pedigree, I'm taking Luke. Hey, uh, is Connor Bedard's brother in the league? Bob, do you want to go over that quickly? I know it's a wave wire edition, but the whole oh, wow, we're, we're really back doing in a potpourri this. Here. We're, we're back in this, buddy. <laughs> oh, we're back in this. Okay. You're back in it? You got a long way to go before that uh, okay. is sealed. I feel good where I'm at. I feel good where I'm at. Just to recap, again, if you've been tuning into the podcast all season long, we had the uh, the bet over or under 68 and a half. That's the number, Bob. I don't want you going back. 68 and a half. Connor Bedard. Nice three-point <laughs> outing on Monday. So he's creeping up again. 39 points, 42 games. Got 26 remaining. By my math, it's never correct. He needs about 30 points, around 30 points, 30 or 31 points, uh, depending on uh, how Bob's feeling about the number that day. Is it 69 and a half? Is it 68 and a half? I don't care. What do you want? I'll give you the 68 and a half. He's uh -oh. still going to miss some games. What okay. do you think? He's going to play every single game, and on top of that, he's going to score three points a game? Please. Okay. I still like where I'm at. I, if, if I had made the bet, before the season, would I feel comfortable where I am right now? And I think the answer to Fair. that is yes. Now we have to we have to rein this thing in. We yes, are all yes. over the map right now. We have to rein this in. And Peter, with his finger up, he might be just the guy to do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's get to one of his line mates now. Bedard Kurashev has been hot. Six game point streak. Good to see at least a little bit of fantasy relevance. Anna back with the Blackhawks for the stretch run. I don't know that they're going to be a competitive team every night. But I would say that I think very soon that 21-game road streak, winless streak, will come to an end. And they have a lot more scoring pop now to tap into. 
Yeah, that's the only other guy on the Blackhawks you can really look at at this moment. At the very least, maybe some shots on goal. Like, he hits, like, three every other game sometimes. So, Philip Kurashev is the biggest beneficiary. And, you know, Connor Bedard's brothers may not be in the league, but his sister's in that car commercial, guys, that airs every oh, five minutes. So, so a little bit of pedigree there, too. Uh, I know I just uh, gloated about all that, um, but I am concerned that they're going to trade Tyler Johnson. And I I don't know. Maybe Bedard's sister will play with him in the NHL. Because, again, the duest respect to that roster, that's probably what scares me. Permitting that Bedard stays healthy rest of season. Who plays with this guy? But certainly Khrushchev. I mean, again, Bedard is showing that he's an all-world generational type talent where you look at this roster and he's still putting up a point per game. It has been uh, really, really impressive. And I want you hit on Bobby McMahon. He's been a really good story for the Maple Leafs. I think of note here... We we didn't we wouldn't normally endorse a pickup of like a bottom six like he's a fourth line guy for the Maple Leafs but he's been promoted elevated and rightfully so six goals in the last seven and he's actually playing on a line right now with John Tavares so Bob McMahon's our guy on the waiver list this week yeah and Willie Styles too on that line so. Yeah. To be honest, guys, like with the waiver wire, I keep saying this. You don't have to keep these guys forever. Like if, as long as they have good lineup placement, he's readily available in all of these leagues. The Toronto Maple Leafs have, have such a strong forward group. They produce on a nightly basis. Even when they lose games, they produce heavily on a nightly basis. So a guy playing on the top six of the Toronto Maple Leafs forward group is a must pick up. That's like the stamp of approval I'm putting on a player this week. Yeah, that's the one thing we've noticed, Pete, with the Leafs the last couple games. They're spreading the wealth, actually, in the top nine. So you got Tavares, obviously, with McMahon. Then you got Nylander on the other line with Domi and Bertuzzi. And then you got the Matthews line. And all of a sudden, like a week ago, we were talking about the Leafs and the, the rally suspension. They're 4-0 with a chance to go 5-0 and coming up in Arizona. And again, we're not doing NHL uh, action collab this week. But, oh, how could you not be on Arizona in that hockey game? The Leafs have dropped four in a row. They are due for a victory. That's 10 in a row for Arizona. Let's move on here. The Colorado Avalanche, a, a name I really like rest of season purposes, guys. Arturi Lekkanen, uh, he had a 2-2 two and two game last week. He's had bits and pieces up and down. It's been a roller coaster regular season, I, th- I felt, for the Colorado Avalanche, where mom- one moment they're world beaters, the next they're, they're struggling and losing to, the, to, to bad hockey teams. So I don't know quite what they are, but Lekkanen's a guy, Pete, I'd be all over right now on the waiver wire because there's, there's not much out there in terms of the waiver wire and having guys rest the season here. Yeah, I was really excited when Lekkanen was coming back from his injury. Took a little while to get going, Anna, but... This is a guy, ever since he put on the Avalanche Burgundy, he's been a different level compared to the rest of his career. So I trust the player a lot. I also like Bowen Byram, three straight multi-point mm-hmm. games. Even if he's on the third pair, that's the fun thing about Colorado. Like any even strength exposure to McKinnon and Rantanen. And then, of course, Lekkinen plays with him on power play one. Nick, you, I remember you stacked those two guys in the preseason fantasy draft. You're running away with this thing, man. Yeah, it's uh, a bit of execution on my part. It wasn't, I mean, the, the strategy is pretty simple. Next man up, and it's it's worked to our benefit uh, so far. Uh, but yeah, Colorado in general, I, I'm, I'm curious. And again, to tie this into fantasy, like what they do to pick up. You, you talked about Lekkanen two years ago. This is the biggest pickup of the deadline. It was our Terry Lekkanen from the Montreal Canadiens last year. It was Ivan Barbashev going to Vegas. Like, it's going to be that type of player. So from a fantasy standpoint, that's what I'm trying to think of. Like, who's a guy who could be a Swiss Army knife, not only in reality, but my fantasy squad. So, yeah, Colorado's been up and down. I love the Byron look, by the way. He's really cooked as of late. Great skater. Uh, speaking of what, Jake Sanderson uh, with the Ottawa Senators uh, back in the mix. And the Sens, you talk about Johnny Lazarus winning the Cup at the Stadium Series. The Sens, all systems go in and to win the second half Stanley Cup this year. Ridley Griggs going to be the MVP. The Ottawa Senators could win like the fantasy hockey Stanley Cup guys because this team at the end of the day, like every time I say this, I've said this like five times since this morning on everything I've been on, like wins, losses, the end result, the standings does not matter if your fantasy players are producing and the Ottawa Senators may be like the deepest fantasy team in the NHL right now because they are running three solid lines. They're top 10 in the league and shots and goals per game. Like this entire squad is producing on a nightly basis. And a couple of guys who I'm keeping my eye on that 
just don't even fit into the puzzle, Nick, because there's only one puck to go around, as you say, are Jacob Chikrin and Vladimir Tarasenko as maybe some trade targets to move if you want to keep an eye on those guys to see if they improve in production once they move. But the Ottawa Senators, like, I love this team in fantasy. There's nothing wrong with them. I, I want to see what that team does, right, Pete? Like, even the guy like Tarasenko is open to all things, a year and a half away for Chikrin. Ottawa's a team who didn't expect to be here. They got a new GM. They're going to be looking for a new head coach because Jacques Martin's done after the season, we think. So a lot of moving parts of that Ottawa team, and I think they could be sneaky. when We, we need that boost here deadline season. A couple of the big names have gone. March 8th is getting closer and closer. And quite frankly, Pete, I want something to talk about, you know? Yeah, I mean, they're going to still be wildly inconsistent, but a nice win against the Tampa Bay Lightning. You could definitely ride them as underdogs. I like that in addition to the fantasy angle and the garbage mm. points and all this stuff, three strong <laughs> lines and two strong defense pairs and stuff like that. But um, I think they were like plus 140 underdogs at Tampa Bay, and they beat Tampa Bay earlier in the season. So uh, that was definitely one in hindsight that you, you could have pull, pulled the trigger on. You talk about uh, the deadline. You talk about our good friends over at Skip who delivered this question. What would you do with Jake Gensel, right? He's banged up, upper body injury right now. I think he's going to return just after the deadline. That's the expectation. If Pittsburgh holds, I should be running that franchise, okay? I'll just say that. They got to sell. They got to sell. They got to pick up some assets here. So, Anna, what would you do if you own Jake Gensel? Would, would that be a guy... Um, as an opposing GM in fantasy hockey that you could target on a buy low right now. I mean, there's been a lot of whispers that Edmonton is very, very interested. Ima imagine Gensel with, like, Connor McDavid. They're trying to make a run for it. I wonder if, like, the fan question was submitted by Nick Alberga because you ask me about Jake Gensel every single episode of this podcast, and I have the same answer. I think that he's a very talented player. He's proven himself in this league. Best time to buy low. You should buy low on Jake Gensel. I hope he moves for his sake, and the Penguins really need him to be shipped out of there. Just do him a favor right now. If he lands in Edmonton, my goodness, that team's going to go in a heater. But regardless of where he goes, buy low on Jake Gensel. We know Nick loves talking about Gensel, but I can confirm that question came from John Hoopa on Instagram as we uh, as we follow the NHL Fantasy on Ice Instagram account. John Hoopa submitted that question. So as much as Nick loves Gensel, that is a legit question delivered by Skip. Brian Rust has been good uh, with yeah. him out of the lineup, so keep an eye on him. I know he's that's probably more shallow leagues, but you know he's been a top 100 fantasy performer before. I just don't trust the Penguins at all. They're they're not going to make the playoffs again, and it's probably not going to be as close as it was last year. Unfortunately for them, they're they're even uh, you know having they're working out Yarmir Yager right over the weekend uh, in warm ups and practice uh, for fun. But uh, team's a bit over the hill at this point. Yeah, I thought that was a bit excessive. Uh, love Yager, but aren't you trying to make the playoffs? Like, this guy's taking part in full team activity. It's like, of course, you're going to lose that game. And I was on Los Angeles in that game, so I was quite happy about the comeback in that game. Anna, here's another question. Uh, I think this is from Bobby on Instagram, delivered by our friends over at Skip. Um, I I've seen some people ask us. I'm sure they've asked you guys as well. Buy, sell, or hold on the B's crease, Anna. So Jeremy Swayman since the All-Star break, 1-3-0, 3.01906. Oh, then you got Linus Allmark, 1-0-2, one, one, oh, excuse me, 2.23909 oh, and one shutout. How are you feeling, Anna, about the Boston Bruins moving forward in this fantasy season? I am feeling fine. I am not betting yeah. against the Boston Bruins. Love Jeremy Swayman. He is a guy that I am targeting in keeper leagues as well as a goalie. It's fine, guys. It's the Bruins. They're going to bounce back. They're going to be great. They have been great. Anytime you doubt this team, they make you regret it within the next two weeks. So I'm not raising the alarm bells on the Bruins just yet, Pete. No, me either. I mean, they've had a couple of suspect losses lately, but that team will just be fine. I mean, they're as steady as anybody is around the league, East or Western Conference. So I would rather have that tandem over anyone else out there. I did want to ask you, Anna, where do you think the Hurricanes tandem ranks, or even trio, if you want to say Spencer Martin's been pretty good in his work so far this year, but Freddie Anderson could come back any day now, it seems, and Kachetkov's been arguably the best rookie goalie this season, so they got some options, not even counting on Tiranta as they move forward in the playoff push. 
Yeah, for me, I have been the biggest fan of the Hurricanes crease in the entire world, literally ever. And it's just because at the end of the day, there's one stat that has reigned true since I've been on this podcast pretty much on a weekly basis, guys. And that's that Carolina Hurricanes are allowing the fewest shots on goal per game in the NHL. Every time I check, they're still at the top of that. So whoever's going to be in their crease is going to be set up for success. Pyotr Kochekov has such a high ceiling. As soon as he finds some consistency in his game, you're going to be happy that you kept him in your keeper leagues as of now if frederick anderson's nearing return that's a guy you got to keep your eye on as well him and joe wall the two goalies that i'm monitoring who are looking to come back rather soon yeah of course joseph wall expected back we think for the next couple weeks uh at some point in time for the next couple weeks i should say for the maple leafs um carolina is interesting because i thought kochekov was going to start on monday and spencer uh, spencer martin of oakville ontario is out there I, i think it was a bit of a showcase you talk about anderson coming back I think it's a bit of a showcase for some teams in this league who can use some depth in between the pipes. So we'll see if Martin either goes back on waivers or he gets traded. Uh, but Carolina is of intrigue to me because I think that's the one thing that's been lacking, missing from that team come the postseason is the crease. If they can shore that up, that's big stuff. Uh, I will my be a bit concerned having Kochekov. It's a crowdy crease, a crease, excuse me, easy, uh, easy to say that. Uh, but Freddie Anderson's a guy I think they're going to have a bit of a tandem going back and forth. I'd put my money on Kachekov and Anderson down the stretch here. Yeah, Freddie, I mean, people forget. I think in his Hurricanes regular season tenure, he's like 60 wins in like 90 decisions or something like that. Pretty good. Crazy, yeah. uh, almost automatic. And, you know, I know the playoffs have been a bumpy road because of injuries and different other guys missing in the lineup, but... Svechnikov is producing at a point per game when healthy this season. So again, it's the missing piece. It's like talking about the Islanders from two, three years ago and saying, oh, if they would have had Bo Horvat at that time, maybe they would have had the extra goal or two or three to win the Stanley Cup. You know, thankfully for Carolina, the window is still open here. And if Svechnikov is healthy, that could put them over the top. I want to talk about Winnipeg's crease here, or excuse me, their top six, uh, just for a couple of moments here. I think there's some buy appeal um, and some guys you could probably find on the waiver wire. Gabe Velarde, uh, last two games, two goals, three assists, eight shots on goal. And uh, maybe my biggest, best stream of the fantasy season on Monday. On Sunday night, I picked up Sean Monahan. I love the revenge look against <laughs> Calgary. And all he does for me is record a natty hattie. So very, uh, very many thanks as well to Sean Monahan. Last two games, four goals, three power play points. And uh, the new top six, you got Connor, Shifley, Velarde, Perfetti, Monaghan, and Ehlers. And I, I'm, again, that was a crazy, crazy holiday Monday where you had the Vancouver game, you had the Calgary game. I've had Connor Hellebuck all season long, and then he gets lit up by Calgary out of all teams. It really, really hurt, I won't lie. I have no doubt in the Winnipeg Jets bouncing back, though, to be honest. Like, all these players are such, like, a value add on this team. I said it earlier when Monaghan first joined the Jets that love that lineup placement on the Perfetti Ehlers line. I think that when you see a guy like Nemesnikov on that line, he was one of the best streams you had this season when they were heating up, and now Monaghan's filling that role. Gabe Velarde was my pick as an off-season mover. That would be Mm -hmm. the best panning out this season. Looking pretty decent. Speaking of that, though guys i want to bring up a sensitive subject a sensitive subject in the fantasy world right now because i mentioned gabe velarde and obviously the guy who went the other way in that was pierre luc dubois and we're seeing a sprinkle we're seeing a little sprinkle sprinkle underneath (laughs) jim hiller of something happening over there finally with him are you guys at all considering maybe he turns his season around pete yeah, certainly. I think with the new coach and a couple of different wrinkles on that team, I mentioned Arvidsson, PLD, if he gets going, could easily happen. That guy was a 70-point player a couple of years ago. And I think that also incorporating Brant Clark on defense, I think he has points in three of his past four or four of his past five, one on the power play. When I was talking to our boy Denny Bernstein and the Kings were flailing going into the All-Star break, I was like, they got to incorporate this guy a little bit, even if it means you bump off Drew Doughty on power play one to make him third pair, first power play on certain shifts. Like they need a little shake up there. And maybe Brant Clark is another guy that they could utilize in doing that. Speaking of Denny Bernstein, I know he's out in L.A., but can we figure out we got to figure out a way to get him on for, our, <laughs> you know, once a year ritual. We usually catch up with him at All Star. Didn't happen this year. Um, we might have to record later in the day, but Denny 
the old Danny Bear. We need to get him on at some point. <laughs> we sure do. Uh, just tying up some loose ends. Some other names I like just uh, to wrap here. Jordan Greenway has been quiet but effective for Buffalo. Last 10 games, five goals, three assists, eight points. Jake Neighbors has had a breakout season for the St. Louis Blues, seven points in the last six. And I didn't realize this till I saw this on social media. Lucas Raymond, 20 points in the last 20 games. And again, a lot of these guys readily and steadily available for you on the waiver wire. So uh, have a look at that because I don't know about you guys. Maybe I'm in some deeper leagues, but it's just so tough to find guys who last to my roster more than three, four days. So that's great to see. Just quickly, the schedule just to wrap. So there's a 10-game Monday Eight coming up here on Tuesday, five Wednesday, 11 Thursday, three on Friday, 13 on Saturday, and seven on Sunday. Um, Just get your couch ready this week. 57-game week in the NHL, which you love to see. So 19 different four-game teams. Uh, You want to stay away from the San Jose Sharks. You were going to anyways. They got just uh, two games on the slate. But it's a fun time of year, guys, because of the deadline. Like, I want to see how, you know, how, how some of these teams react. Contender is what they do to get involved here. And I really do feel because of the lack of like rentals out there where we could see a couple deals come out of nowhere here. I'm curious what the Minnesota Wild are going to do here after the multiple six point outbursts for Kaprizov. I have him in that fantasy league. So, as much as you're running away, Nick, if he keeps getting five or six point games, might be climbing the standings a little bit with each passing day. But yeah, for Minnesota. You can actually right now get them. I'll give a shout out. Bet 365 plus 350 to make the playoffs. They're only two points out. If they're scoring like that and, you know, they got Brodeen back, they they got some offense here. They're better than Nashville. They're better than St. Louis. They're better than, you know, obviously Arizona and some of those other middling teams. So why not take a flyer on the Minnesota Wild here? It's tough to know when, uh, what Bill Guerin's feeling and how he's looking, right? They, they lose Jared Spurgeon for the season. That's a big-time loss. And they're like a middle team, and then you got the whole parisi Suter cap situation. Like They're probably better off selling and revamping and getting one the next couple of years than maybe this year. But that's our lasting memory of Minnesota, what, the last 15 years. That's what they do. They make the playoffs, right, Anna? They do. And I was about to say that before Pete did, like, they're right there. They're right in the hunt. I'm not shocked at all if they would make the playoffs. They're better than the two teams ahead of them. And there's a lot of players on this squad that I really like. I know you're big on Eric Sinek, Nick, in terms of fantasy. Oh. He's been a stud for me as well in my leagues over the past couple of years. There was something up with Kirill Kaprizov. He just didn't look like himself earlier on, and now he finally does. List goes on and on. Love Matt Boldy. Marco Rossi can produce points. Matt Zuccarello. The, like, I can just name like a bunch of guys on this team who can produce on a nightly basis they're a high scoring squad I like the wild they're making the playoffs I'm committing to that right now (laughs) guys sometimes you got to stick your neck out and I I won't lie hearing Eric Sinek's name just it triggers me I I dealt him maybe a month and a half ago in my keeper league to get later to get (laughs) Deline and he comes at me with a six point game it's a sore subject so we're going to move on Uh, just some picks and props for the rest of the week things I'm looking at We talked about the Devils having to win that game over the weekend. I feel the same way against Washington. It's a juiced price, but I I like the Devils against the uh, the Capitals on Tuesday. And famous last words, Minnesota-Winnipeg, under, under. I I think both teams are going to attempt to play some low-event hockey here after whatever whatever transpired on Monday. So I'll angle (laughs) for the under in that game. Um, coming up Wednesday, Toronto, Arizona, Austin Matthews gunning for 50. I think that happens. I, I think at the very least, the Yotes keep that game close. Okay, the Coyotes have won four straight times against the Maple Leafs here, Bobby. Uh, Nick, can you leave some meat on the bone for the, your partners Nothing. here? I mean, Zero. geez, you're playing like James Harden. We're trying to be like the <laughs> prime time Golden State Go Warriors. Ahead, Go ahead. I mean, a little meat on the bone. I'm gonna. I like Nashville. I know that they're on a bit of a downtrend here, but I like them plus money against Vegas. Say what you want to say. At the end of the night, we'll look at the scoreboard, and it'll be a tight game. Hopefully Nashville ends up on top, and I think they will. Bobby. I got to interject. I love that angle. Did you hear Did you hear what they did in, in, in Nashville? It was a big story not. here in Canada. So apparently they were supposed to go to the Sphere to watch U2 
and and they pulled it. They're not going anymore. The coaching staff's like, you guys have not played good enough. We're not going anymore. And and so, so it was a big story in Canada over the weekend. Yeah, oh, I didn't hear that. I, hey, I love my man Brunette. Actually, he's on the chirp this week. There you go. Uh, this week we recorded it last week. It's coming out this week. And I like Nashville here. Just I didn't know that, but yeah, a little a little, little spanking, if you will. <laughs> And now they uh, now they have to you know they have to bow up in in Vegas here they they missed that on the sphere. Anna Pete got a little meat on the bone left for you two. Well, <laughs> speaking of you two, like who's, who's using those tickets? <laughs> who's using those tickets? Aren't those tickets like almost a thousand dollars or something? That was the all-time Send them to best. Us. We'll hop on a flight. Best segue <laughs> in the history of the Fantasy on Ice podcast I, ever. I, I'll tell you who didn't miss the Sphere U2 concert. It was Barry Trotz and his pals in Vegas that he brought over there. So they had a good time at the Sphere. True, true. U2's like that band that gives you like the free songs when you buy an Apple device, right? Oh, okay. Um, any any props oh, you like? Oh, I do have oh, some props. I like. You guys <laughs> actually listen to U2? I didn't know that Anna, was like a please thing. Please don't okay, start anyway. this at oh, the end of this, this is an iconic. That's an iconic. Uh, <laughs> You're killing on. me. Anna, go ahead. We're way off the rails today, but this is this is a uh, a Tuesday here Popper. that we're having fun. So what do we got? Anna, props. We, we had a holiday weekend. First of all, I'm going to start giving props off by tailing one of Pete's favorites. And I think Victor Arvidsson hits the over on shots again, guys. Like, I really like that look for him. And the Los Angeles Kings need to turn it around, so I'm not going to doubt him. Next up, I have Carter Verhage also hitting the over on shots. The Ottawa Senators nice. on the second leg of a back-to-back. Play Tampa. They're going to be tired against Florida. And last but certainly not least on Wednesday, Slavkovsky is here for the Montreal Canadiens. They're playing the Buffalo Sabres. Anytime goal for Slav in that game. I like the Islanders to bounce back and beat the Penguins, two teams that just absolutely fell apart over the weekend. But I feel like the Islanders are the better team out of the two. Uh, They can steal that one on the road plus money on the Islanders. And then also on the Panthers in general. I know we've been beating that drum all season. Our our buddies at Action Network are high on the Panthers saying they're the most robust team in the league and stuff like that. It's reached a point where you got to try to tap into these guys any way that you can. Ekblad's coming back on Tuesday. Forsling's been a beast if you're playing DFS or props for shots. He's one of the best possession players in the league. And also Anton Lindell, even on the third line, has a nice little point streak here. Look for him to keep it going on Tuesday against the Senators. Always got to be careful this time of year, but now like we're hearing that Noah Hannafin's name's linked to the Florida Panthers. They're a scary, scary team, guys, and uh, I think they'll go out and end up winning that Atlantic division and go on to, to bigger and better things in the Stanley Cup playoffs. You talk about teams prepped to win a cup. I think the Florida Panthers are. So we'll leave it at that. Coming up later this week, the week a week 19, excuse me, mailbag edition will answer all your questions. A pivotal time in the fantasy season. Producer Bob Bender, go ahead. We got to get Johnny Lazarus on. We got to get Lauren Jabara on. We got to get Danny Bernstein on. These people are all busy doing their own thing, but we're trying our best, you know, especially from the Jersey Mike's Fantasy League. We got to get a couple of those folks on uh, one of these Thursday shows, Pierre. And we're getting close. We're only like two weeks away from the trade deadline. We got to get Pagnota on, too. We usually do that once a year. So there's only, whatever, four shows in between. There there are some of our guests coming up. Uh, We'll try to hit them all. I need to see Pagnota with his four buttons unbuttoned and that, yeah. that, that chest of his. I need to see that before March, okay? <laughs> Italian. It's the Danny DeVito special, and we got to tap into the Bob Bender Rolodex. So many thanks, producer Bob Bender, for Pete Jensen and Anadua. I'm Nick Alberga. You've been listening to NHL Fantasy on Ice Delivered by Skip, the official food delivery app of the NHL.